The next thing that we're going to put on is a walk around tour of the Natural Encounters exhibit. So this is one of the exhibits that's on at Leeds Art Gallery at the moment. Once we're out of lockdown, we'll reopen and everyone can go and see it in real life. Um, but for the time being, here is a video of some of the stuff that's in there at the moment. Welcome to Leeds Art Gallery and our new exhibition, Natural Encounters. Natural Encounters has just opened and will overlap two seasons as summer changes to autumn and autumn changes to winter. And as you see Joseph Boyce's 7,000 Oaks outside the gallery in Victoria Gardens, we can see the leaves, which were just a fiery hue of orange, gradually drop to winter. Natural Encounters is conceived as a group exhibition drawn almost entirely from Leeds Art Gallery's collection. The exhibition brings together modernist, surrealist, outsider artists and spans almost 400 years of art history alongside contemporary artists' responses to the theme. Many of the works that have been included in the exhibition have really been selected by our curatorial team to make us think about our relationship with the natural world. From the very microscopic threat of coronavirus to the fragility of the climate, many of the works in the exhibition make us think about our relationship to the planet as a human species and how precarious this relationship is. Throughout history and across different world cultures, the natural world has featured predominantly in different religious belief systems and cultural mythologies. Whether or not we subscribe to certain religious belief systems, they have undeniably been cultural forces that have affected our relationships and attitudes to the natural world. One section of the exhibition features artists who have made work in response to Christian, Islamic and Judaic religious beliefs and artistic traditions, as well as ancient Greek mythology and religion. The earliest work you can see is by Jan Bruegel from 1615. According to the Bible, when God created Adam and Eve, he told them to exercise dominion over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. As such, a form of divine stewardship of the natural world was entrusted to humankind. But this also set forth the notion that humankind has the power or the right to control or govern nature. A power that has arguably been abused since industrial times, with our species doing untold damage to the natural world. In the centre of the picture, you can see the tree of knowledge from which Eve picks the apple goaded by the devil in the form of a snake. If we look at another work that hangs nearby by the Scottish outsider artist Scotty Wilson called the tree of life with fish, we can see how this archetype of the tree connecting the terrestrial world to the heavens translates into rabbinic Judaism which tells of a tree of souls which produces new beings which fall into the treasury of souls from which the angel Gabriel plucks new life, represented here as fish. Trees have always played a powerful, symbolic role in human society. In this gallery, we bring together over 40 examples of different trees drawn entirely from our collection. And in these drawings, photography and prints, Artists have sought to imitate nature, but also to be inspired by it. From the floating world prints of the Japanese master, Utagawa Hiroshiga, to the atmospheric drawing of the French landscape artist, Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot, and from the romantic views of the pastoral Italian scenes by John Robert Cousins, as well as the drawings by David Nash of his growing sculptures. A walk through this pictorial woods will then lead the visitor into a room that contains depictions of the natural world from our Works on Paper collection, ranging from the apocalyptic to the serene, the eerie to the majestic, and the precise to the painterly. This work by Paul Nash, entitled Winter Landscape, from 1914, 
is a view of the artist's garden. The artist painted the garden in twilight. For Nash, the site had an enchanting quality that he called a spirit of place. The evocative, dreamlike and almost spiritual qualities were sought after by artists like Paul Nash and Samuel Palmer. This year, Leeds Art Gallery and Leeds Beckett University offered a special opportunity to postgraduate architectural and landscape students to propose interventions into the gallery space. The selected work was by Howard T. Kent and is titled Hive and is an artistic exploration of sustainable human-made interventions into nature. Here we have a work by the British surrealist artist John Melville called Natural History Museum of the Child. Like some kind of fever dream, the painting shows a child bent double within a swirling vortex of sinuous plant forms and insects spiralling around them. This could be read as the child's subconscious or imagination writ large upon the canvas. For the surrealist like Melville, nature was a byword for the marvellous, the wild and the instinctual, which could never be fully tamed or mastered by humankind. Other works in the exhibition that you can see here could be read as a comment on our throwaway society. With once desirable commodities such as Tupperware or plastic items now rendered obsolete or redundant. Here you can see those items repurposed by artists such as Tomoko Takahashi and Brian Griffiths into a diorama of a landscape in miniature or a vase of delicate flowers. Helen Chadwick's viral landscapes, made at the height of the HIV and AIDS crisis in the 1980s, are about the vulnerability and porousness of our bodies. Here Chadwick has quite literally overlaid the scans of the inside of her body over the rocky Pembrokeshire coastline. She describes the sea as like a viral entry into the body. Standing by the sea, she said, I began to feel that these slippages between our own boundaries and our boundaries of the sea, the brine in our bodies beneath our skin being cooled by the brine of the sea, there is a sense that the fluids wish to meet. The importance of access to green space and to nature has been highlighted for many of us during this time of lockdown, with many of us seeking the calming power of nature during the pandemic. A number of artists in the exhibition have similarly turned to nature for sanctuary during times of upheaval. From the moving portraits of the artist Veronica Ryan with her sister as children in their back garden in London, made just after the loss of her sibling due to suicide, Ryan has written that for her, gardens and plants are places for repose and provide some pathway to comfort and to healing. This work, Medicine Wheel by Chris Jury, is a year in the life of the artist with one natural object foraged or scavenged for each day of the year. This was made during a particularly challenging year for the artist who was temporarily separated from his family. As the artist commented recently, in some ways, the isolation he felt then was similar to the self-isolation he's experienced during lockdown. Drury found that the act of taking a walk every day and finding an object, whether a bird egg or a feather or a piece of bark, took him into a state of mindfulness where everything became connected. We're delighted to include in Natural Encounters a living artwork by the artist Sade Misha. Entitled It Takes Time, the work explores the relationship between mental health and the natural landscape. It Takes Time is made of two parts. One is a living artwork in the form of a meadow, and the other part, the accompanying video. As Misha says, exploring nature centers and refreshes me in a way that only my counseling sessions did. As Natural Encounters is an exhibition focusing on humankind's relationship with the natural world, we thought this was the perfect opportunity to redress some of our working practices as an art gallery. We've used only existing plinths for all works that have been recycled and given a new lease of life. The labels that we have printed were done so on recycled eco board. In addition, 95% of the works in the exhibition are from our own Leeds Art Gallery's collection. Those works that we have borrowed within Yorkshire have come on an electric van. We hope that in bringing together the exhibition Natural Encounters and giving audiences the opportunity to experience these artists' works, there's an opportunity to kind of pause and reflect 
on how we might, as a species, find a deeper connection and equilibrium with the natural world. <laughs>